I've been working on turnover for probably 30 years. I mean, it's something that is so important to a process to have continuity with your employees, to have the same people doing the same jobs that they feel they're familiar with. And they're uh, consistently doing that in a way that continues to improve. It's, uh, you know, not only from the cost of recruiting, but the, just the cost of training and, and having people that know what they're doing. It's important to focus on turnover. So we've done that in our business for many years. The problem over the last few years has been that there's been a lot of pressures on the labor market that changed things quite a bit. And things that, techniques that worked in the past didn't always work in the, in the now. So in the recent past, uh, our turnover continued to increase even though the things we were doing were pretty much the same, same things we've been doing for a long time and been pretty successful at it. But we saw turnover continue to rise and the cost of that turnover continue to go up uh, over a period of, the, you know, with COVID and everything going on around the labor markets that it became evident that we were failing, that we had to do something different. David made the decision that we needed to dive in further, and he picked one of the locations that I'm in charge of with the company. And I think because one reason was that historically, the location that had very good turnover, but had increased dramatically over the last couple of years and to the point where it was one of the worst in the company. So we felt like it was uh, an appropriate place to start. And that's, we started that in January of 2021. It all made sense. We talked about building trust and working on, especially focusing on the first 30 days, 60 days, 90 days when we originally build our relationships with people. For years, I had been told people are gonna, you know, people don't wanna work these days or uh, there's nothing we can do about turnover. It's gonna happen. It's just a reality, just live with it, those kind of things. This program actually gives you tools that you can use that focus on the right things that they're not easy and they're not gonna work the first day. It takes time and it builds on itself, but the foundation of it is building trust. And when you think about it and you look at it as uh, deeply as I have and continue to, and I are as tied to it as I am from a, from a personal standpoint and from a professional standpoint, it starts to make sense. We're to the point now where I know the system works. Well, this is the third, well, I've started three different operations uh, utilizing these same techniques. We started it at Dothan and we went on to two other locations, the last one just in the last couple of months. And we've seen significant progress at all three. The original one that we started 18 months ago or thereabouts, we've seen an improvement of almost 50% in turnover. Uh, we have continued to make progress at our other two locations as well. The second location, which we started in the fall of 21, I think November of 21, the second location is improved by about 35%. And then the final plant that we just started a few months ago in June, they've seen about 4% improvement and they were already pretty in pretty good shape, but they've, they've continued to make progress even in the last couple of months. And we expect to make more from there, but in all three cases, dramatic improvement. And uh, a big part of it has to be attributed to the concepts uh, around the, uh, stay interviews and the ideas around pushing the importance of trust with new employees from the first day. Thirty day, we've, we've our improvement at Dothan has been about twelve percent over that period of time. When you get to uh, looking at sixty days, it's improved by about thirty percent, and then when you get to ninety days, it's improved by about sixty percent. So our ability to hold on to people during that initial break-in period when you know the job's new and they're new to us, uh, we've improved across the board. And that's really what you're looking for with this kind of program is to have time to get to know someone long enough for them to learn their job and also feel comfortable doing what they're doing and become part of the sort of the, the team and the family and feel good about it. And that's what we've been able to really, from a tactical standpoint, been able to focus on and from a strategy standpoint, seeing progress over a period of time. And that's what you want to see. We continue to get better the, the longer that we're in the program because now we have at the front line, and really what you want is frontline leaders to understand the benefits of this program. 
it's easy for us to say, do this. And in the beginning, they did it because we told them to do it. The state interview is a process that takes their time away from the floor. And it required over time for them to see the benefit of it, for them to be really good at it. But once they start to do it over and over again, you see that it does work, that that effort to build relationships and build trust early on pays off in that people come to you with their issues, they communicate with you on a more front, honest way, and we're able to utilize those, you know, the, the concepts that we teach around leadership to help people. And that makes the employee feel good. It makes the leader feel good too, to be able to solve those kind of problems. So it really does build on itself. And over a period of time, you get, you do see continuous improvement. And that's what we're trying to do now is make sure the frontline leaders see that benefit, make sure they're committed to it, where it's not just something that's driven from the top anymore. It's something that they see the benefit of and continue to work to get better at. The surprise piece of it, I guess, is that it addressed things that I had been working on and thinking about for a long time. And the more I threw myself into it, thinking about it and working on it, the more benefit I saw. So my surprise was it gets results, but it's also it also makes sense. It's not something that uh, from, a, from a logical standpoint around how do I address this issue that's been plaguing us for so long, uh, it, it all makes sense. So it's worth it because the results are there, but also because logically in my mind, I can see how it works. So those two things together motivate me to be to try to be better at it too. So I can set the example for the people that work for me. Trying to lead our teams and trying to explain to them that this is not easy, okay? This requires discipline. It requires effort. It's not something that you're going to be good at right off the bat necessarily. It's not something that you're going to see progress right off the bat necessarily. It takes time. You do it an individual at a time, but, but you get better at it as you do it. And it really requires effort from the start, from the initial conversations that we have with a prospective employee all the way through the hiring process, the interview process, the hiring process, orientation, the onboarding. And then you get to the point where you do the stay interviews after the, after the employees have been working for you for a week or two. And that whole, but, but that whole process requires that knowledge and that effort that, hey, the point here is we're trying to build trust. So from the first day we talk to somebody, we want to make sure we do what we say we're going to do. We want to make sure we're honest with people about what kind of job we're talking about. We want to show them what that is. Then we want to provide all the information that they would need to be successful. So it's intentional in that we're trying to get that person through that first week, the first two weeks, the first 30 days to try to get them comfortable with what they're doing. And then things start to come together as that employee starts to have some confidence in what they're doing. It starts to become who they are. So at that point, you know, you're pretty well, that battle is pretty well won. And then we've got to, we've got to continue to do what we say we're going to do, that this is not a silver bullet. It's more like a silver plow. And the idea is that a silver bullet implies something's easy. You do it once, it's fixed, it's over with. You don't have to ever do it again. That's not this way at all. This is work. This plow is not going to do you any good in the barn. The only time it does you any good is when you're working it. And it, that cultivation of the earth for, with a plow or with your team, with new employees, with building that, cultivating that trust is the only way you get it done. It doesn't do itself. You have to do it. This is a Bear Bryant quote. It's not from me. I, I, and, I, and I said when I talked to Sherry about it that this is an SEC coach, but in South Alabama, football is big. It's not the will to win that makes the difference. Everybody has the will to win. It's the will to prepare to win that matters. Do you have the will to prepare to win? So the, the context of turnover is that Everybody wants to improve turnover. If you ask somebody, they want to improve turnover. I've been hearing people talk about improving turnover for years and years. The real question is, are you willing to do the work to improve turnover? Are you willing to prepare to improve turnover? Are you willing to put the effort in to improve turnover?